So, Doug, we're just a mere two and a half feet away from the last plant, the Lindera benzoin, and now we have another surprise. What do we have here? This is Viburnum dentatum, another another uh, volunteer. Very productive plant at, at home, though. And this morning I found this saddleback caterpillar, which looked like a good saddleback caterpillar this morning. But as you can see now, it's got its back is covered with... Um, they're braconid larvae that are in the process of spinning their cocoons. So the larvae have, have eaten out the insides of this guy. Mm -hmm. He's, he's going to die soon. Oh. And those cocoons will, uh, the, the larvae will pupate within those cocoons, and then they will emerge as adults. And then next, next year, they'll start the cycle all over again. So uh, saddlebacks, you know, they're a beautiful caterpillar, but if you touch them, they do have stinging hair. So people, people don't like them a whole lot, but there you go. That, that's don't control. touch if you don't want to be stung. Touch, oh. yeah. <laughs> Watch, but don't touch. Viburnum dentatum, also known as arrowwood viburnum, is one of the many native plants that supports beneficial insects like the braconid wasp. This species is native to the eastern United States and is hardy in zones 4 to 9. It prefers sun to light shade conditions and moist to average and somewhat dry soil. At maturity, the plant will be 6 to 12 feet high by perhaps 4 to 10 feet wide. It flowers in the late spring with creamy white blooms that supply nectar and pollen to pollinating insects, especially valuable to native bees. And those flowers are followed by berries for birds in the late summer and uh, early fall. This is Kim Ironman from Eco Beneficial. Thanks for watching. For more useful gardening tips to improve our environment, please visit us at www.ecobeneficial.com.